I'm David Cutler, and I'm here with my co-author, Nancy Bollier. And what we want to tell you about is a paper that just came out that we're incredibly excited about on the organization and performance of U.S. health systems. So let me, before telling you about what's in the paper, let me tell you a little bit about the cast of characters involved. Nancy and I led a team of a lot of folks, you can see their names uh, uh, on the left-hand side of the screen, that are looking at how do we judge the how do we measure the organizational the organization of healthcare in the US that is how integrated is healthcare and then second is what are the outcomes of being more integrated versus less integrated so there are a couple of parts to it but let me tell you first that the reason we're doing this now is because one of our papers on this topic is being published in JAMA and it's going to be officially available on January 24th 2023 um it's a special communication, so it has a lot of detail about things, and so partly we're hoping to demystify a little bit of it here. This research has been supported by uh, AHRQ, the Agency for Healthcare Research and Quality, under the grant numbers that are here. It's a U19 mechanism that AHRQ put in place. We worked quite extensively with, with AHRQ and the other uh, systems involved, the other researchers involved with AHRQ to, to, to do this work, and so we're grateful for the financial support as well as the intellectual substance that were, that was brought by all different component all different parts of this. So what is it that we're doing? Well, let me give you a little bit of the context for it, which is that health systems in the US have grown dramatically in size and importance. So what do I mean by a health system? I mean an uh, an organization that's composed of various types of acute care providers. We're going to define it as at least one hospital, at least 50 physicians and at least uh, 10 primary care physicians with that they have to be at least uh, some amount in, in one area and then they can be much bigger than that and they can go on into multiple areas and so we've sort of known because we see uh, uh deals you know in newspapers and in journals you see a little bit here and there that healthcare is getting more organized bigger but there are two things that we uh, have not known one is kind of just how big is that that is if you get away from case studies and anecdotes how big is the consolidation in healthcare? and then second is what are the characteristics of medical care that's provided in organizations that are more uh, 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 or, or organized, but more more centrally organized versus less centrally organized? So how do we uh, how do we compare care? And of course, there are a couple of different dimensions that you want to know about. One is uh, the cost of medical care. That is, what is the cost of medical care higher or lower? in uh, bigger organizations, in bigger systems of care? And second, is the quality of care higher or lower? So what we did in this paper is first, we brought together a very large research team bring, working through a number of different uh, data sets. I'll tell you briefly about that in a second to figure out um, uh, how what, what does the organization of medical care look like? And then second is we use data from Medicare and a large commercial insurer to look at how the cost and the quality of medical care compares along a number of different dimensions between system care providers and non-system care providers. Let me first, I'm going to tell you basically about what we did with the data and then Nancy is going to come in and tell you about the results. So let me just give you a very brief sense about how we constructed the data. Remember, we're thinking about networks. So a network is an organization of hospitals and of physicians. You can think about it kind of on the screen here. You have uh, oftentimes you have a chain home office, a group of related uh, providers. There will be one or more hospitals underneath them. Sometimes there will be independent clinic groups. Sometimes there will be clinic groups which are affiliated with hospitals. So all sorts of different arrangements for those. And we wanted to bring them all together. That's not the easiest thing to do. So we actually did that with several different databases. We have a database of physicians, so we know where physicians are practicing and you know who they're practicing with. The physician practice database then has information about those practices in terms of who owns them, what they're affiliated with. Uh, we have links to hospitals, both uh, inpatient and uh, post-acute, acute and post-acute care facilities, so we have a separate database for that. And then many are owned by chain home offices, and so we have a separate database of chain home offices. And we then link across all these different databases. We use data from uh, CMS in terms of who it pays, who it writes checks to, data from IRS 990 forms, nonprofit forms, 
data from uh, the American Hospital Association, data from a large commercial insurer, data from a variety of different Medicare systems, all to try and get a sense of what all these relationships look like. And there's really an enormous amount of energy that goes into that. So I did want to highlight that that's one of the contributions here is the ability to put that together. And that's one of the reasons why this research hasn't been done is because it's been so difficult to do that. So once you do that, what do you get? So now I'm going to turn it over to Nancy, who's going to tell you about what it is that we found out about the, the healthcare system in terms of its organization, its cost, and its quality. Great. Thanks, David. Uh, so as David said, we are going to use this uh, data set and we're going to link it to claims data and other data on hospitals and physician providers and to look at what providers are in systems, what their characteristics are, and what the characteristics are of providers that are outside of systems. And then um, we, we come up with an, uh, several findings, a few of which we'll highlight here. So uh, it turns out that a good share of providers and medical care uh, are in systems. Um, and so you can see uh, on the uh, in the figure that uh, about 60% of hospitals, um, all types of hospitals, and 80% of hospital beds, over 80%, are actually in systems. Uh, and then on the physician side, uh, about 40% of physicians and 40% of primary care physicians are in systems. Uh, so that's quite a large share of uh, all the providers in, uh, in the US who are in systems. And then when you turn to look at uh, the medical care, um, starting first with hospital admissions, uh, we expected that a very large percentage of um, admissions among system patients uh, would be in system hospitals, but we also found that uh, that system hospitals provided a very large percentage of the acute care in hospitals to patients um, who had uh, non-system primary care physicians. And a similar type of pattern you can observe um, also for specialty uh, physician office visits. So uh, when you just go to see a specialist, uh, uh, for system patients, a very large percentage of those visits were provided by uh, specialty physicians who were members of health systems. Uh, and a substantial percentage of, uh, of non-system patients obtained their care from specialty system physicians as well. Next slide, David. Thank you. Uh, so moving on to the performance analysis, uh, we did, we linked these data um, on providers to claims data, both Medicare claims data and commercial claims data. And we did analyses on um, a number of performance dimensions. Uh, when looking at the medical care quality, what we found was on average and across you know, a large number of measures, that uh, that the quality was higher for people in systems, in health systems, patients who were uh, who were had primary care physicians who were in systems. Um, and then we also, of course, looked at the cost uh, of providing uh, this care. And we found that the care is actually much more expensive in systems. And uh, we did some analyses that also looked at uh, how these results varied by uh, the size, for instance, of uh, the physician practice. And we found the biggest price differences really were uh, among small and medium uh, physician practices. So when you consider these two uh, things together, that the quality is marginally higher in systems, but the, the, the cost is, is quite higher, uh, we conclude that overall systems really haven't lived up uh, to the promise of better quality and, uh, and lower costs. 